Next on the St. Paul Forum, we are going to have an amazing guest from Sprockets, Eric Scold, the director. Welcome to the St. Paul Forum. My name is Chad Johnston, the Executive Director of SPNN. We are here today uh, joined uh, with Eric Scold. He's the Director of the Sprockets Program, and we're really glad to have you. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Chad. Thanks for having me here today. Of course. Thanks for coming down. I feel like SPNN and Sprockets has had a pretty long relationship. I'm, I'm surprised we haven't had you before. <laughs> yes, well, we have had a long relationship with SPNN, and we really appreciate the work you all have done in the community with our young people. Great. Well, Eric, why don't you just, for our audience, um, what is Sprockets? Yeah, um, so Sprockets is St. Paul's Out of School Time Network. We're a network of after school and out of school time programs that um, help to increase access to and improve the quality of out of school time in St. Paul. So we really want um, young people in St. Paul to be involved in after school and out of school time programs so that they can, uh, you know, really connect with their passions and their interests and, and, and uh, get involved in their community. Sure. And so, why, I mean, I, I feel like our education system tries to pad in all these things. Why are our out-of-school time programs, why are they so important? That's a great question. And it's, you know, the, what young people need to be successful is, is great and varied, but after-school and out-of-school time programs play an important role. Um, you know, after-school programs help keep kids safe. Um, they help working families, but most importantly, they inspire learning. So. I think um, one really important role after-school programs play is they connect kids to those passions and interests and ideas that really help them, uh, you know, get inspired to learn more, get involved in different things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I know you see here that young people participate in your programs and then think about a career in the media or pursue college to, right. to, to learn about media. So really, um, after-school programs provide some of those opportunities to connect kids to different activities that they wouldn't normally do and find out what really moves them. Right. And so um, how does Sprockets do that exactly? Or what's, you're, you're not running programs yourself, right? You're helping to connect parents or organizations or? Yeah, so I, I think one thing we try to do is to spread the message in St. Paul that after-school programs are important partially by doing things like this where we have an opportunity to talk to lots of people. But we also have a website with a program finder on it that um, helps people find out what is happening in their neighborhood that their kids might be interested in. Mm -hmm. So you can go to our website, um, www.sprocketsaintpaul.org, and look up different programs and find out what, what might interest your kids. We have everything from chess programs to basketball programs to dance programs. Mm. We have over 1,400 programs listed in the program finder, oh, wow. so there's lots of opportunities for kids to get involved. Um, but then we also work to improve the quality of these programs to make sure that they're good for young people and that they're mm -hmm. impactful. Um, so it's interesting, you know, research shows that quality is really important to, to, to be able to have a strong impact on kids, and, right. and even more so that a poor quality program can actually have a negative impact on a kid. So that's been a real focus mm. of Sprockets. Gotcha. And when we talk about quality, we're really talking about the interaction between the staff and the young people and making sure that's a high quality, respectful interaction where kids are getting some choice and voice and doing things that they mm -hmm. want to do and are in a safe spot um, doing great things. So. We do a lot of training with uh, youth workers and, and people who work in these after-school programs, mm -hmm. and then we also um, you know, sort of help them think about how to improve their quality in different ways. I think what I've seen here with SBN and youth is the more youth-driven the program is, the more they're engaged. <laughs> uh, you know, when they, uh, we built a mini recording studio because that was something they had the interest in and desire to learn to do, even though we were teaching video, we, we said, okay, quick, shift, and, 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 and those youth became truly engaged uh, and kept coming back. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I think, you know, young people um, want to have say in the, the activities that they do, and 
um, the best youth programs to take a lot of consideration into that and provide lots of opportunities for young people to contribute and, mm -hmm. and help direct the program. And then you do see them coming back over time, building those relationships with other adults that are so important, and really, um, you know, allowing them the chance to learn the most from their program because sure. it's something that they're really interested in right. and engaged in. They're invested in and they feel, oh, I don't know, important. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go figure. <laughs> and sometimes do important work, you know? We recently, we moved to this new facility and actually our, our youth had discovered there wasn't a bus stop between the bridge and university and so they actually made a video about that and then sent it to the Met Council one thing that led to another, and uh, we got a bus stop. <laughs> and that, for them, being able to engage in at that level and be able to make change, um, I can't, it meant a tremendous amount to them and to their learning experience. That's a great example of young people, you know, sort of identifying an issue that matters to them and, you know, acting to make change on that, um, on that issue, but mm -hmm. with the support of some right. adults that can help you know, sort of teach them how to think about it in different ways. And, I, you know, youth pro there are a lot of youth programs across the city that do, do that similar work with, you know, the appropriately aged kids who want to have an impact right. on their community and contribute back. So That's right. it's, a, it's a really important part of youth work. So from, from what I understand, Sprockets is pretty unique in St. Paul. And can you tell me why that is and how, how sort of St. Paul benefits from having Sprockets as part of the community? Absolutely. Um, so Sprockets is pretty unique. There are not many cities across the country that have an, uh, a coordinated network of their after-school programs. And um, the biggest reason why, why St. Paul has Sprockets is because of the leadership of Mayor Chris Coleman. Mm -hmm. um, when, Chris, when Mayor Chris Coleman was elected, he, he knew right away he wanted to have an impact on the education of young people. Mm -hmm. And so he, he wanted to think, how can the city come together to really have the, the biggest impact on, on young people? And one piece that emerged was Sprockets, to have a way to coordinate the different uh, out-of-school time activities, know more about who's participating and who's not, um, think about how to improve them so that they're, they're better. And um, so, so Sprockets really benefits because we now, or St. Paul benefits because we now have a, a, a more coordinated effort to think about how we can best support our young people both in school and out of school mm -hmm. and, and ensure their success in, in more ways. We have a more aligned system so more people are talking with one another mm -hmm. and, and thinking about how they can work together um, to support one another. Um, and we also have a more impactful system because we're improving the quality, providing people with the training they need and, right. and other things. Yeah, it seems unique to me in the in the sense that I, I feel like I see a lot of cities that will look at services and as opposed to identifying what's out there and trying to support them, they'll often duplicate and create programs similarly um, trying to get to the same goal, but this seems unique in the sense that you, you all and the mayor were saying, let's what do we already have and how do we improve what we have and how do we get those people together and convene those people? It just seems really unique to me. Um, in terms of how cities typically work or function. Yeah, I think you know one of the first things that Mayor Coleman wanted to know is how many programs are out there and how many kids are participating in them. And right. he was surprised to find that we couldn't exactly accurately answer that question. <laughs> right. Um, so that really pointed to the need for a more coordinated system to you know really figure out who is able to access these programs and who right. isn't, and and uh, how can we really make sure that young people are having access to the, to the types of things that they they want to right. do, but also that are important to support their success. So. Um, if I'm a parent or a young person out there looking for something to do, how, how can folks get involved in, in after out of school programming? Well, I already mentioned the program finder, but I think, uh, so you know, that does give you a, a sort of list of figuring out what you want to do, um, or you know, a list of things that you could try. Um, so I think, you know, the best thing to do is sort of start, you know, what's in my neighborhood, what interests me, you can go to that um, place, give them a call, check it out, and sort of feel: Does this feel like a right fit? Am I mm -hmm. am I making um, am I am I making good connections with the staff and others? I mean, obviously, for parents of young children, this is an important thing to do: right. um, is to think about, you know, how is this program going to fit for my young person? And then older kids oftentimes know how to, you know, can sort of sort that out for themselves as well. Um, 
but so I think it's really about finding a topic that interests you and then finding, you know, then going and trying it out, right. taking a risk and seeing how it goes. And, you know, if you like it, you get the opportunity to stick with it and really learn something. We do have a resource on our website as well that helps parents sort of quickly think about whether or not this mm. program is of high quality. Mm -hmm. And it sort of gives a nice simple frame about some checklist things to right. look for as you go in. Some basic standards and questions to ask and yeah. all that. Yeah. And so, um, do you think about geography? Is that important to how you think about building these networks and connecting people? Or is there a way to sort of look, oh, I'm in this neighborhood, or do you identify particular neighborhoods and areas that maybe need more support than others? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, well, Sprockets does think about neighborhoods, and partially, St. Paul has had a long history of neighborhoods coming together to think about how they can best support their young people. Right. So even before Sprockets was created, there were networks of, uh, of program providers in, uh, in neighborhoods working with one another. And neighborhoods are important because, well, St. Paul is a city of neighborhoods, um, so we have that sort of in our DNA. Um, mm -hmm. But also, it's how kids experience their lives. You know, right. uh, oftentimes they have less access to transportation and other things, and so the things that are close to them are the things that are easiest and most important to access. Um, we do look at where programs and how they're distributed um, across the city, mm -hmm. and how many kids are attending those and, and different things. Um, using some uh, using Sprocket shared data system that um, allows us to aggregate um, data from programs across the city, right. and then um, and then we do encourage people to think about that as they're looking at where to you know start a new program or um, wh where they want to um, you know direct some of their services that they can have a better sense of well, where might there be a need or an interest for this mm -hmm. across the city. Okay, and so there's a. Summer is here. Um, can you give us some examples? What are like a few of the really cool summer programs that you've seen out there or that maybe demonstrate the diversity of programmatic activities there are in St. Paul? Sure. Uh, well, one that always comes to mind right away for me because my children participate is St. Paul Urban Tennis. Um, St. Paul Urban Tennis has tennis camps happening all across the city. It, it, you know, where almost everywhere there's a tennis court, you can find uh, right. some of their staff working with young people to learn the skills of tennis, but also learn skills of leadership and, and uh, literacy and, and other things. Mm -hmm. um, I also, um, when I used to work directly with youth, youth, worked with the Youth Farm and Market Project, which is an urban mm -hmm. gardening project that thinks about. Uh, cool. How can kids uh, grow food, but also how they how can they be leaders in their community and mm -hmm. think about how they can solve food issues and other things? So right. um, it's a very active outdoor-based uh, um, program that's really mm -hmm. um, fun to participate in. The St. Paul Public Libraries have tons of stuff going on in the summer, and you know are one of those places that are c consistently open, and you can mm -hmm. go and right. sort of do your own thing and check out some books and 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 get the. Uh, Good things to bring home, but they also have story time, lots of activities, and uh, other things to participate. So, I, I'm always encouraging people to go to the libraries. And then there are just a, a great other variety of programs that are happening. Um, you know, every everything from you know week long camps to mm -hmm. summer long camps that that happen. Um, you know, every day to some of the more um, time-bound things like week-long soccer camps um, put on by the Sana Foundation. So, mm -hmm. um, St. Paul's fortunate to have a lot of different activities that kids can get involved in. And of course, summer is a time when lots of people are thinking about how can they get their kids engaged and uh, participating <laughs> in different stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, we get about, oh, 10, 15 youth participants here all summer, and they create documentaries about issues that they're concerned with, and it's a it's a great experience. It's also the energy around here gets really fun and exciting and a little louder than normal. Yeah. But we like it. <laughs> yeah. um, so, I mean, a lot of this out-of-school programming does have to do, you know, with just having a safe place to be, learning some new skills, um, finding a supportive community. But there's also been sort of a growing awareness around young people developing social and emotional skills. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that and what exactly those are and how are you all thinking about that? You know, one thing I, I see here, at least that Sprockets contributes to, is to making sure that we're following some best practices and we're doing things in a consistent matter, manner. And uh, and so, how are you all looking looking at that? 
Yeah, so social emotional learning is a big topic and, and an increasing focus of Sprockets. And social emotional learning has had some different names throughout the years. You know, some people uh, have called them 21st century skills, some mm -hmm. people have called them soft skills. Um, but they're all the sort of foundational skills that people need to be successful. They're things like persistence, um, mm. strong communication skills, mm. um, yeah, strong, social, uh, strong emotional control, knowing how to control your emotions and regulate yourself, and all those things. And it's the it's just becoming more and more clear how important those skills are, both to you know as a foundation to be successful in school, but also successful in life. And it's also becoming clear um, that those skills can, you know, they develop on their own, but they can also be supported and helped to develop if they're if it's done intentionally. Mm -hmm. So Sprockets is really trying to think, work with programs to think about how they can more intentionally build activities into their programs to support those skills, mm -hmm. and how they how we can um, educate the the public and the and the field about the importance of those skills and and make sure that we're working to give kids. Um, not just the academic support that they need, mm -hmm. but also the social and emotional learning support that they need. Give them experiences that can teach them persistence, you know, um, having an opportunity to fail, but, keep, but try again and mm -hmm. again until you succeed. Um, having an opportunity to build confidence. Um, and, and those different types of things are very important experiences for young people um, and oftentimes happen in, in out-of-school time programs but also happen when you know, you're connected to a caring adult that is mm -hmm. different than your parents, but somebody who you trust and, and get it to build a relationship over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the remarkable thing for me about seeing a youth program over a couple of years is watching those very shy, um, very quiet individuals over a year or a matter of months and suddenly they're kind of standing up straight and <laughs> they want to be in front of things and they they want to talk um, and is is there like a is there a curriculum or how you know what's the what's the strategy for for I don't know engaging and uh, creating that sense of self-worth and confidence and yeah, well, I, I mean, I think it's interesting. I think it's something we're learning more about. And, right. and I think it's it, there are some curriculums that help do that. And I think partially what we were talking about earlier, where you allow young people to identify an issue that they care about and then work mm. towards that issue in a structured way and have an impact on that issue, whether it's um, through media or through you know, making change in some other um, sure. direct way, is a really great way to do that. Um, when I worked directly with youth um, at the Jane Addams School for Democracy, we had a couple of times where we had the opportunity to go to the Capitol to talk to mm -hmm. legislators about an issue that kids cared about. And I just saw some of the same things you just mentioned, that you know the, the opportunity to prepare, feel nervous, but then go and have some success really builds confidence. It mm -hmm. teaches you a lot of those um, other skills, and it sets you up to sort of do the next thing. Um, and so I think we're learning more about how to both create whole curriculums and projects that support these skills, but also just how, how to add some um, smaller activities into a, day, a day's worth of programming that help kids develop those skills too. So some simple things like just being sure that um, you reflect at the end of each program day mm -hmm. on what you learned and, and other things also help kids realize sure. what they've learned and um, articulate it better. Sure. I think one of the valuable things I hear with within youth programming at Sprockets is the ability to have an outsider actually come and observe the programming um, and help evaluate its effectiveness. And it's not just from the, oh, I see they're doing it right. It's actually working with the youth to let them provide feedback and providing some um, sort of best practice feedback as well. Um, is that very is that common within this field, or is that something sort of specific to how Sprockets was was making sure programs were effective? It, it it's becoming more and more common, and I think I mean I think one thing that's unique about Sprockets is that we have a system that does it across the city, not just within any one organization, mm. which is unique. Um, but it is really important, and I think. One really important aspect of that is is that you know Sprockets does not come in and say that this is a good program or this is a bad program. We more try to work with a program to identify ways that they can improve and then help them work on it. So you're always continuously working towards improvement. Um, it's not a good or a bad. Right. Uh, and it's a how can we do better. And right. um, I think that's a really important uh, 
frame to have. You know, it's that youth work is important, mm -hmm. so we should always be working to do it better. Gotcha. Another, I know the work we do at SPNN, um, Sometimes people try to emulate, right? They call and they say, oh, you have this neat program. How did you do it and how's it working? Is that something you get? Do you get calls from other cities or from other youth organization groups or um, is this something that you see, as we've said, it is unique. Is it something you see other folks starting to look at? Yeah, it is actually. And so we've been very fortunate. We've been connected to a group of other cities across the country through the Wallace Foundation. So we had the opportunity to meet with about eight other cities um, a couple times a year and talk to them and gotcha. hear how they're doing things and coordinating their service. We, al we also have uh, other networks um, here in the in the region. So mm -hmm. Brooklyn Park and Brooklyn Center have, a, have an out-of-school time network called the Brooklyn Bridge Alliance. And Minneapolis has an after-school network called the Minneapolis After School Network. And so we also do a lot of thinking and learning with them to think about how can we, you know, align some things right. and, and learn from what each other's doing. Um, but then we also do get calls from across the country about people who are trying to learn what it is we've done here in St. Paul and, right. and think about building their own um, networks across, uh, you know, in, in other cities. So it, it's a it's a fun uh, conversation to have when, you know, somebody randomly calls from. <laughs> right. Texas. <laughs> right. Yeah. How do you do what you do? <laughs> yes. Um, I want to make sure we get the website again because I, I would guess that there's a parent or someone that's working in youth programming that may not know what Sprockets is and wants to see that resource guide. What is the website for us? Yeah, it is www.sprocketsstpaul.org. And of course, if you Google Sprockets St. Paul, you'll also find it. You'll find it. And so tell me, how did you get in? To sprockets. <laughs> How did you get into to this to this position? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I've always been interested in education, and I've, I've especially been interested in education that happens in, in uh, less formal settings and, and, and um, not in school. Um, because I had an experience myself where I worked with a, a community organization and, and got involved, and, and it really helped me learn as I was in college, and really pointed me towards my interest and in, in mm -hmm. working with people and thinking about education. So. Um, so my interest in education led me to, to work in the community, and then my work in the community evolved into my work in Sprocket. So I, I, you know, I, I, I've been very fortunate to work um, with a lot of different groups uh, in, in St. Paul, work at, you know, with uh, community-based organizations, mm -hmm. work with the city, work with the schools, and work with the libraries. And I really enjoy my work because I get a chance to connect with all those different types of organizations, right. but also with people who you know want to work with and help support young people. So it's a really great um, gig. <laughs> we like those gigs, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like to, I like to work at the place that feels good and that I'm doing good. Absolutely. We have just a couple minutes left, but if if you were to look five years down the road, what what do, what do, what do you see Sprockets? How do you see its evolution, or what do you see it working on? Well, I mean, we've already mentioned social emotional learning, and, right. and I think uh, there's a lot to learn about that, and I think we're really excited about that. I think there are opportunities for Sprockets to connect with more people. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, think about how we connect more um, groups working with the young people, but also have more connections in neighborhoods to other people who want to, you know, um, learn about what we're doing and, mm -hmm. you know, think about how parents want to get more involved or get their young people involved differently. And then I think there are time, uh, there are opportunities for Sprockets to do more of a convening role and bring mm -hmm. people together to talk uh, about issues facing young people in the community and ha have young people help lead some of those conversations and right. contribute to them. So we want to continue to do what we've been doing and, and continue to build on, on the um, success we've had, but I do think there are ways for Sprockets to connect with more people and share more ideas about what great types of things are happening in these mm -hmm. programs across the city and, and, and think about how we can uh, build on that. Sure. Well, I know in terms of our work and me only being here three years, a lot of the connections that Sprockets made for our programs was really beneficial for us doing good work. Um, so I can only imagine the scale of the impact um, that Sprockets has had across the city. Um, so Eric Skold, I really appreciate you taking some time out to tell us about sprockets um, and we'll have to bring you back on in a couple years to see how many more people are involved in in the network well that sounds wonderful I'd, I'd love to do that and then thank you for having me of course anytime uh, we've been talking with Eric Skold he's the director of sprockets um, and this is the St. Paul Forum my name is Chad Johnson executive director we look forward to seeing you again 
Take care.